Hey there! Today, we're going to be talking about three psychology experiments that people in GPT get wrong. Now, GPT is what we call a large language model, and it's models like these that power things like ChatGPT, which you're probably familiar with. And these models can do some really cool stuff, like predict text, they can solve problems, and they can even make decisions. But the question is, how good are they? So today, we're going to talk about three psychology experiments, and these are classics, and we're going to see how well people and GPT do in making their decisions. So the first problem is called the Linda problem. This is a hypothetical situation where you have to make a decision. So Linda is a bright, outspoken, and politically active person. Now the question is, is Linda also a bank teller? Or is it more likely that Linda is a bank teller and an active feminist? Now, most people and GPT choose the second option. Now, the second option is actually not the most likely. So if we look at the people who are bank tellers and the people who are active feminists and the characteristics of Linda, this many people are going to represent those characteristics. Whereas if we're looking at just Linda and bank tellers, we're looking at a lot more people. So it's actually more likely that Linda is just a bank teller. All right, moving on. The second problem we're going to talk about is called the cab problem. And this is called a base rate fallacy problem. So there's an accident with a cab at night in a city. And in the city, there are 85% green cabs and 15% blue cabs and a witness can recognize the cab color about 80% of the time. So the question is for this accident, what is the chance that the cab is green? Now the most common answer that people give is 80%. Now the reason that people give that answer is because they ignore the base rate and just use the last information they were given. GPT usually gets this answer correct because it actually calculates the statistics combining the base rate and whether the witness can recognize things. But if we change the wording subtly, GPT makes some weird mistakes that humans wouldn't. So for example, if we changed our question to what is the chance that the cab is black, GPT then says 20%, which doesn't make any sense because there aren't any black cabs in the city. A human wouldn't make that mistake. So a subtle change in wording can change the ability of GPT to answer something correctly. And our last problem. I'm going to dub this one the money problem. It's not actually the name, but there are lots of versions of this. It's basically a loss aversion bias problem, which just means people don't like to lose money. In this case, I'm going to give you $200. With that $200, do you want to have a 50% chance that you lose 100 of it or have a 100% chance that you lose 50? Well, people and GPT generally choose A. And this is because they don't want to lose anything. So if there's a chance that they're not going to lose anything, that's what they decide on. Now, if we change the wording here from lose to gain, our answers actually shift because here we have a 100% chance we gain something. Both people and GPT have the same shift of answers with the wording change. So let's keep in mind when we're thinking about these large language models like GPT, that they're trained on text that's written by humans. That means a lot of GPT is going to have the same biases as humans do. So the next time you use chat GPT or any other large language model, Remember that what you get is only as good as the training that the model received. Hope you learned something today. Have a great one.